Welcome to Collecting Chaos and the Eternal My Light Project. Now the original uh, premise behind the Eternal My Light Project would I would I would just grab comics out of my collection and show them to you at random. I would pick a box and just randomly pick comics out of it. But I got away from that. And today I'm going to do it again. Plus I'll reveal what my favorite cover of the week is. If that's what you want to watch, probably shouldn't go anywhere. Let's get into it. First up, I have Ice Age on the World of Magic the Gathering, number two, and this has in it a card. It is a Chub Toad from Ice Age. I don't know if that's the right... Let's see. Yeah, I'm not going to try to read the copy right here. And I have Ice Age on Magic the Gathering number three, still polybagged with its uh, markers. And Ice Age on Magic the Gathering number four, which is out of the package, out of the, uh, yeah, it doesn't have the markers with it. I read the story. What can I say? Uh, I do have several copies of Ice Age Magic the Gathering number three. I'll probably put these three up as a lot. I haven't decided yet. Then I have a, from Spoof Comics, Imp Unity. Gender is not absolute. And this is a spoof on Unity uh, by, uh, I think it was Valiant Comics that did it. Unity, time is not absolute. And it's pretty cool. Don't remember if I read that or not, but I don't plan on getting rid of it, so I like the spoof comics. And this one has a nice wraparound cover. So I will be hanging on to that. Uh, Hard Corpse number eight. Hardcore number 10. Hardcore number 11. And hardcore number 12. And we'll look through, through this, this one a little bit. Art, pretty much what you would expect from Valiant. Nice art. Uh, I was never really much into hardcore as a storyline, so I didn't really read it. But in general, most of the Valiant stories were pretty good. Uh, I'm going to take a sip of coffee, and then we'll continue. Hot good. Then I have Kiss Psycho Circus number one. And I have two copies of that. I think this is the first time this one's ever been opened. Well, the art's a whole lot better than what I remember, probably because I never opened it before. Pencils by Angel Medina, inks by Kevin Conrad, story by Brian Holgan. Two copies of that. One of those will go up for auction tonight. I will be in the uh, Comic Book Steals and Deals community auction tonight. At least that's the plan. If my internet holds up, I was having a lot of trouble with it last night. Of course, we had a thunderstorm, so it's understandable. 
This KISS Psycho Circus number two. We'll probably hang on to this one. KISS Psycho Circus number four. Kiss Psycho Circus number 12. Number 13. Number 15. And I have multiple copies of that, so I will put that one with number one, and we'll make a little lot out of that. The other two will stick into the black hole that I call my collection. And here's Kiss Psycho Circus number 16. And I will take one of those and put it over here also, so we'll have a three comic lot of Kiss Psycho Circus. Here's uh, Gene Roddenberry's Lost Universe, number five. First appearance of Xander. So I guess this is a kind of a key. Rich Buckler pencil. Rich Buckler Jr. pencils. And it has two covers. Kind of like that cover better. I don't know why. We all know why. And that's the first half. Let me show you these again. You remember, one of these will be my cover of the week. We've got. Boris the Bear is Punish Bear, or Punish Bear. Boris the Bear, where walks the dump thing. And G.I. Jackrabbits, a real American hare. Couldn't you just see an action figure line of these? That would be great. <laughs> I would buy the heck out of them. has a very stiff cover. December 1986, G.I. Jackrabbits, Volume 1, Number 1. So I just thought I'd remind you of which ones, which ones they were. We'll pick them in a little while. Uh, don't forget, uh, tonight there'll be a community auction over at Comic Book Steals and Deals. Last night we did uh, the Horizon Picks first, my uh, live stream on his channel, um, which I was co-host on, or I was supposed to be the co-host on, and, and but unfortunately we had a little problem with my internet. Uh, we had a really bad thunderstorm and I kept losing uh, my internet every time we have a lightning strike I'd lose my internet for a couple of seconds so it, for me it wasn't the greatest in the world but um, I think it went rather well for him and we talked about toys and uh, I liked that I enjoyed it very much showed off a few of my toys from the 90s a couple of my Star Wars a couple of I, I don't think I showed but one G.I. Joe I would have liked to have shown more but I think we're going to do I think he's planning a whole episode just on G.I. Joe, uh, three and three quarter figures. I could be wrong, but I think he plans on doing that and we'll probably have another guest on as well as myself. Uh, tomorrow night is uh, my live stream, uh, which is 
Collecting Chaos Live. And uh, I will have as many guests as want to show up. <laughs> uh, it's basically a free-for-all where I chat with the audience and, and of course, Horizon Picks will be there also. And we bring on other people that want to talk and, and answer questions and just generally have a good time. Um, there are a few simple rules to my live stream. No cursing. Uh, you know, we try to, I try to make it uh, friendly for all ages. Uh, the fastest way to get bumped is to... You know, if you say one bad word, I might get away with, I might let you get away with it, with, you know, but I might mention it to you. Uh, if, if it continues, of course, I will, I'll bump you. I'll, I'll get rid of you. Um, sorry, but, you know, some, my grandchildren occasionally watch part of the show and I do not want them exposed to that sort of thing. If you are a guest and you show a comic that, that is, you know, adult oriented, uh, you will be bumped. I will get I, I'm, no warning on that one. I'm just going to remove you from the stream. Uh, it's not going to happen. I, I don't allow it. Uh, on my show, you know, on my Eternal My Light project, stuff like that, it's not intended for children. And none of my shows are intended for children, but I don't keep them from watching it. That's up to your to the parents. Uh, and, but I try not to show nudity, and I try to keep my language appropriate for all ages. So that's what's going on tomorrow night. And Friday, of course, I'll have my uh, whatever the heck the show is I do. Freeform Friday, which is interesting because basically I have a freeform live and then a freeform Friday. Uh, if everything goes to plan, I should drop my next how-to video on Sunday. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. So, uh, keep your eyes open for that. It ought to be fun. And uh, let's show some more comics. We'll start with Indiana Jones and the Arms of Gold, number one. Nice cover. I think that's Dave Dorman that did the art on the cover. Dark Horse is good about giving credits. Cover artist. Oh, that's Russell Walks. Hmm, looks a little bit like Dorman. Oh, yeah, there, there's his. Yeah, that's Russell Walks. What was I thinking, right? Uh, pretty nice. Uh, I have number two, number three, and number four of that. All of the covers are by Russell. Uh, I liked these because of the painted covers. I liked the Dark Horse Indiana Jones stuff. And uh, Fate of Atlantis, number one. And this is definitely Dorman. It says so right here, Dorman. That's that's one of my favorite uh, Indiana Jones covers ever because it says it all. And here's Fate of Atlantis two. And number three, I apparently don't have number four. Either that, or it was only a three issue. Dark Horse trading card inside. Is it really? Are they in there? I don't know that they're in there. Apparently not. Well, that's a shame. I don't remember ever removing anything from these. Unless it was polybagged. This might have been polybagged. Yeah, I'm 
pretty sure that's what it was. That needs a little bit of spine tick removal. If I ever get the tools to try to do that, and I do have them on order, they just haven't shown up yet. Indiana Jones and the Golden Fleece. Of course, I'm going to try spine tick removal on some comics that I don't care about first. Because I figure I'm going to ruin a few of them. Indiana Jones and the Iron Phoenix. Another Dorman cover. Indiana Jones and the Iron Phoenix number two. And number three. Indiana Jones, Thunder in the Orient, number five. Number six. Jurassic Jane number seven. Now this is for mature readers and I'm not going to open it up and show you the interior art because almost every page shows some nudity. Um, I have two different covers of this. The other one I can't show you. Uh, it's only a 16 page comic. Here's an early Brian Michael Bendis work, Jinx Buried Treasures. But it also had other things in it. This is from 1998, Image Comics. Just from Techno Comics, John Jakes' Mulkin Empire, number one. I have several of these. I don't know that anybody would want them. If you'd like to see me put a, a, some of these up for auction, let me know. Uh, especially the John Jakes' Mulkin Empire. Uh, like I said, I believe I have several of them. Here's a number two. Uh, several of them, as in like three or four copies of each. I just didn't put them all here. And here's 2000 AD Presents number 9 with uh, Judge Anderson. Of course we know what this stuff looks like. It's just awesome reprints of the British stuff. And 2000 AD Presents Judge Anderson number 10. And I believe that's going to be it for the uh, for the comics that I'm showing on the Eternal My Light project today. So I guess it's time. Will it be G.I. Jackrabbits number one? A cover by somebody I don't know. Uh, let's see. I'm going to assume it was by Frank Galaska, Dennis Braun, and Joe Capo Cobiana, Cobianico. Some I have no idea what how to pronounce that name. I'm not going to try to slaughter it. Actually, the cover looks a whole lot better than the interior. I just think it looks cool. You know, it's a wind-up tank and jackrabbits and bunny rabbits and crows and yeah it's just a cool cool comic when I saw it I, I knew it was the one I, I wanted Boris the Bear Dump Thing which winner of three 1986 Black Nag Awards best use of wood grain best cinematic storytelling page 19 Boris number four and tallest publisher, Mike Richards. <laughs> Made up awards, anybody? Uh, 
and Punished Bear. Obviously it's going to be one of these two. And not because these are the only two that the uh, the comments selected, uh, but because these two are my favorites of the, of these of these three. I really like this one, but it's just not cover of the week material. Not really. <coughs> I only did it to spotlight the uh, the comic. Oh, there's no question. Why, why, why delay the inevitable? In, inevitable. We all know it's going to be Punish Bear. Boris the Bear number thirteen is my official cover of the week for this week. So I guess that ends the uh, Eternal My Light project for the today. Obviously, it's eternal, so it will never end. Uh, before you handle your comics, before you handle your collectibles, make sure you wash your hands. It's good for your comics. It's good for your collectibles. It's good for your health. And we'll see you tonight, hopefully, at uh, Mike Rogers' Comic Book Steals and Deals, the community auction. Until then, take care and bye. Awesome little cover there. I like that one a lot.